Let's take a look at employee benefits. In general, a total compensation package includes some combination of wages or salary, incentive pay, and benefits. The term for compensation in forms other than cash is employee benefits. Examples of these benefits include health insurance, retirement plans, and paid vacations, among many other possibilities. As a part of total compensation, benefits contribute to attracting, retaining, and motivating employees. Different employees look for different types of benefits. Employers need to examine their benefits package regularly to see whether they meet the needs of today. Benefits packages are more complex than pay structures, so benefits are harder for employees to understand and appreciate. Employers need to communicate effectively so that the benefits succeed in motivating employees. Social Security contributions, pensions, and retirement savings plans help employees prepare for their retirement. Insurance plans help to protect employees from unexpected costs such as hospital bills. Some benefits, such as Social Security, are required by law. Other regulations establish requirements that benefits must meet to obtain the most favorable tax treatment. Even though many benefits are not required by law, they become so common that today's employees expect them. A large employer without benefits would be highly unusual and would have difficulty competing in the labor market. Benefits impose significant costs. On average, of every dollar spent on compensation, more than 30 cents goes to benefits. An organization managing its labor costs must pay careful attention to the cost of employee benefits. Why do organizations pay a growing share of compensation in the form of benefits? It'd be simpler to pay all compensation in cash and let employees buy their own insurance and contribute to their own savings plans. That arrangement would also give employees greater control over their compensation. The federal and state government require various forms of social insurance to protect workers from being out of work. In general, Social Security provides support for retired workers. Unemployment insurance assists laid-off workers, and workers' compensation insurance provides benefits and services to workers injured on the job. Because these benefits are required by law, employers cannot gain an advantage in the labor market by offering them, nor can they design the nature of these benefits. A collection of laws and its amendments between 1935 and 1965 created what's now the Old Age Survivors Disability and Health Insurance Program, informally known as Social Security. Workers who meet eligibility requirements receive the retirement benefits according to their age and earning history. The Social Security Act of 1935 established a program of unemployment insurance. It provides payments to offset lost income during involuntary unemployment and it helps unemployed workers find new jobs. The size of the unemployment insurance tax imposed by the employer depends on the employer's experience rating, the number of employees the company laid off in the past, and the cost of providing them with benefits. Conditions include demonstrating that they've been unemployed, they're available for work, they're actively seeking work, and they're not discharged for cause or quit voluntarily. Workers who meet these conditions receive benefits at the level set by the state, typically about half the person's previous earnings for a period of 26 weeks. Sometimes Congress funds emergency extended benefits. States have also passed workers' compensation law, which helps workers with the expenses resulting from job-related accidents and illness. About 9 out of 10 U.S. workers are covered by state workers' compensation law. The amount of income varies from state to state, but typically two-thirds of the workers' earnings before the disability. The benefits are tax-free. The states differ in terms of how they fund workers' compensation. Most states allow employers to purchase coverage from private insurance companies. Most also permit self-funding by employers. Organizations can minimize the cost of this benefit by keeping workplaces safe. Other types of benefits are optional. These include various kinds of insurance, retirement plans, and paid leave. The most widely offered benefits are paid leave for vacations and holidays, life and medical insurance, and retirement plans. In general, benefits packages at smaller companies tend to be more limited than at larger ones. Benefits such as health insurance often extend to employees' dependents. Traditionally, these benefits have covered employees, their spouses, and dependent children. 
The major categories of paid leave are vacations, holiday, and sick leave. Employers also should establish policies for other situations that may be, require time off. Many organizations provide paid leave for jury, jury duty, funerals, and military duty. Rates for group insurance are typically lower than for individual policies. Also, unlike wages and salaries, insurance benefits are not subject to income tax. Because of this, most employees value group insurance. The most common types of insurance offered as employee benefits are medical, life, and disability insurance. An employee wellness program is a set of communications, activities, and facilities designed to change health-related behaviors in ways that reduce health risks. Typically, an EWP aims at specific health risks, such as high blood pressure, cholesterol, smoking, or obesity, by encouraging preventative measures such as exercise and good nutrition. Employers may provide life insurance to employees or offer the opportunity to buy coverage at low group rates. Disability insurance provides protection against loss of income. Typically, short-term disability insurance provides benefits for six months or less. Fewer than half of employers offer long-term disability plans. Employers have a wide latitude in creating the total benefits package they offer. A logical place to begin selecting employee benefits is to establish objectives for the package. This helps an organization select the most effective benefits and monitor whether the benefits are doing what they should. Among companies that do set goals, common objectives include controlling the cost of healthcare benefits and retaining employees. The first goal explains the growing use of wellness programs and consumer-directed health plans. For the second goal, employees say that benefits keep them from walking away, but employers need to learn what employees care about. Employees expect to receive benefits that are legally required and widely available, and they value benefits they're likely to use. To meet employee expectations, it can be helpful to see what other organizations offer. Employers can purchase survey information about benefits packages from private consultants. In addition, the Bureau of Labor Statistics gathers benefits data. The individual choice in a cafeteria plan enables each employee to match his or her needs to the company benefits, increasing the plan's actual value to the employee. Another way to control costs is to give employees incentives to choose lower cost options. For example, employees' deductibles on a higher cost health care plan could be larger than on a relatively low-cost HMO. Employers also need to consider the average cost of various benefits types. Benefit requirements add to the cost of compensating employees. Organizations looking for ways to control staffing costs may look for ways to structure the workforce as to minimize the expense of benefits. They may require overtime rather than adding new employees, hire part-time rather than full-time workers, and use independent contractors rather than hire new employees. A number of laws are intended to provide equal employment opportunity without regard to race, sex, age, disability, and other protected categories. Some of these laws apply to the organization's benefits. Legal treatment of men and women includes equal access to benefits, so the organization may not use employees' gender as the basis for providing more limited benefits. Age discrimination is also relevant. Employers must take care not to discriminate against workers over age 40 in providing pay or benefits. Also, early retirement incentive programs need to meet certain standards. The programs may not coerce employees to retire. They must provide accurate information about the options and enough time to make a decision. The Americans with Disabilities Act imposes requirements related to health insurance. Under the ADA, employees with disabilities must have equal access to whatever health insurance coverage the employer provides other employees. Even so, the terms and conditions of health insurance may be based on risk factors, as long as the employer does not use this basis as a way to escape offering health insurance to someone with a disability. Along with rising benefits costs, reporting requirements have encouraged many companies to scale back benefits to retirees. Organizations must communicate benefits information to employees so they'll appreciate the value of benefits. In practice, it's difficult for employees and job applicants to understand the value of their benefits. This is especially true for the complexities of health insurance and the nuances of getting the most out of retirement benefits. The edge in labor market goes to employers who help them understand. 
these employers figure out how to use plain language and they spread messages through multiple channels on and offline. To increase the likelihood that employees will receive and understand messages, employers can combine several media, such as brochures, question and answer meetings, internet pages, and text messages and email. An investment in communications to employees can reap great returns in the form of committed, satisfied employees.